When you, when you read a soldier settlement file, you'll see that maybe a half of those people who initially take up a block disappear and the file is transferred to someone else. Now, I think this is very important to understand that there were lots of casualties of the soldier settlement process. And I think this is due to a number of causes. I suppose the first is that world trade simply collapsed between the wars um, and uh, the price of wheat collapsed, the price of dairy produce collapsed. And those farmers who'd come onto these blocks um, taking advances to try and buy the blocks in the first place found themselves um, getting saddled with growing debts. And by the 1930s, this has reached crisis proportions. Uh, in the 1930s, world agriculture uh, is in a state of utter disarray and the poor old soldier settlers are caught in this world crisis. But behind that big picture, when we look at the soldier settlement, there is the individual stories of the settlers. And to understand failure, I think we've got to look at these individual stories. Now, imagine you come back from the war, you're shell-shocked, you're missing an arm, um, you're, 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 you've got sort of shrapnel wounds in, in various parts of your body. You then have to go onto this property and clear mallee trees. That is a, is a, is a terribly labour-intensive business. You have to roll the trees down and you have to cut them. So for a, for a disabled soldier, um, that is a great problem. Again, many of these men are suffering the sort of trauma of years in the trenches. They're suffering from shell shock. The, we've got environmental constraints on the system. Um, I said before, when we looked at John McEwen's block, he took up about, uh, I think it was about 80 acres. That simply wasn't enough to farm successfully, particularly as the price of commodities are dropping. Um, irrigation often doesn't work. I mean, they're experimenting with irrigation, but you might get on your 80 acre block, you might get an area that's totally waterlogged, unable to drain, so all your pasture dies. Um, in, the, in, in, in Gippsland, um, as the trees are cleared, as I said, opportunistic sort of grow, uh, plants take over your block. Bracken tries to colonise the place you've, you've, you've tried to turn into a dairy farm. Now, we don't want to paint the picture of soldier settlement as a total failure. I think that's a trap we can fall into. I think there were a, quite a, a large number of soldier settlers who did stay on the land and survive on the land. And I think there's a number of reasons for this. First of all, I think if they had agricultural experience before they came on the land, they were more likely to survive. Secondly, I think if they had family networks before they came onto the land, they were more likely to survive. So if you took up a Mallee block with your brother, who was also a returned soldier, you could work that land together. Um, you could cultivate larger areas. Um, if you had children of a, of a, of a, of a sort of workable age, um, you could use those children. Now, I think what largely makes soldier settlers successful is the intervention of the state. And in the 1930s, the government decides that it's got to do something with this problem of soldier settlers. And what the government does in the 1930s is it decides to reform the whole scheme. They um, give soldier settlers more land. What the government also does is it writes off debts and decides if a person looks like they're going to be a competent, fa a competent farmer, they allow them to, to, to wipe off a large portion of their debts. As a historian, one, one of the things that I love doing is driving through the Victorian countryside and trying to read the countryside. Now, we've talked a lot about the troubles that's, that uh, close, uh, soldier settlers faced, but I think we've got to acknowledge that they did do a great service settling large parts of rural Victoria. And I think next time you drive through the country, look at the countryside and, and look at, for clues for what the, the world that those soldier settlers created. The other day I was driving from Bendigo to Rainbow in the Mallee and in several towns I came through, I passed 
soldiers' memorial halls. Now, have a, when you're sort of going through the country, stop at those halls. Imagine what they would have been like in the 1920s and 1930s when the returned soldiers came on a Saturday night with their families to watch the latest Hollywood movie or came there for a dance. Um, and look at the towns themselves. Um, if you see, I suppose, buildings that sort of date from the 1920s, you can be pretty well sure that they're the towns built by, and, and the buildings built by soldier settlers.